social media on the fight against war crimes. Our videos and images taken down by social media algorithms destroying evidence vital to prosecuting serious crimes. A new salary scale for teachers. On World Teachers Day, Nigeria announces a special salary scale and new retirement age for teachers. His Zimbabwean animal sanctuary joins the Jerusalem Dance Challenge and video of staff dancing with elephants, giraffes and other animals goes viral. And thanks for tuning into the show that goes around the continent to bring you stories near and far. I'm trained by the NUSO at Channels Television here in Lagos. I'm joined by Vincent Macquarie with a new look from Voice of America in Washington. Thanks, I'm Vincent Macquarie. Happy to be with you again for another edition of Africa 54. Due to the global outbreak of COVID-19, the Voice of America has reduced staffing at VOA headquarters in Washington. So as you see, our broadcast looks a little different for now. We appreciate you staying with us on Africa 54. Let's start off with the latest from Nigeria. Chamberlain Oso in Lagos brings you that story. President Muhammad Dubari has approved a special salary scale and new retirement age for teachers in Nigeria. The Minister of Education, Mr. Adamu Adamu, announced the president's gesture at an occasion to mark the World Teachers' Day in Abuja. Teachers in Nigeria celebrate World Teachers' Day, a day set aside by the United Nations to honor educators around the world for their commitment to the advancement of the teaching profession. As they celebrate, the teachers are also demanding for a better welfare package. The NUT acknowledges effort being made by the Foreign Ministry of Education to enhance the welfare of teachers and the hopes that special teacher salary structure, TSS, and other incentives for teachers be approved to address the peculiarities of teaching career and to uphold the true identity and the state of the profession. And it seems the federal government is also mindful of their needs as the Minister of Education gives them good news. Special salary scale for teachers in basic and secondary schools, including provisions for rural posting allowance, science teacher allowances, and peculiar allowances, is hereby given. There will be a special teacher pension scheme to enable the teaching professional to retain his experienced talents as well as extend teacher's retirement age to 65 years. Since 1994, the World Teachers' Day has been celebrated annually around the globe, and the Minister of State for Education explains its importance. Having a special day to celebrate the teacher is just but a token gesture of recognition to the sacrificial contribution of teachers. And that is why for us at the Federal Ministry of Education, we are desirous to entrench quality teaching with emphasis on efforts to train retrain and reinvigorate the teaching profession with the best among us. Previously, it was said that teachers' rewards are in heaven, but with this pronouncement by the federal government, hopefully teachers here in Nigeria will begin to reap the fruits of their labor here on earth. Let's get more now on this story from renowned educationist, Professor Abiola Awoshika Fagbetu. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having 54. me. Well, this policy that the government has announced for the teachers, how do you receive it? What's your impression of it? Hmm, I think it's, it's a good one, if they would make good on it. Um, adding five years to the terms of service, uh, good for some people who are not ready to retire, but it's also good for the government, because then it moves out their payment of pensions for those groups of people that stay uh, longer than the 30 years in, in the service. Um, they promise to do housing, yeah. you know, for, you know, the rural, in the rural areas. It would be great if they would do it, but the point is, will they do it? Mm. We've had promises. The teachers have been clamoring for this for so many years. 
and they think this is the year they can give them the gift, then so be it. What will they do it? But we have already seen some states note some challenges, saying they may not be able to uh, perhaps fulfill or carry out that from the part of the federal government. So do you think that at the end of the day, they can indeed unify and execute this even in this pandemic era? I think they can do whatever they put their hearts in. If, if they decided that this is the time to do it for the teachers, they can. Um, and the pandemic also showed, you know, how important our teachers are, you know, to us. Um, it's especially teachers that are qualified and, you know, teachers that have a passion uh, for teaching. So if they want to reward them for what happened uh, in the pandemic and, you know, how the, the teachers, you know, rallied, you know, because I, I from uh, my experience, a lot of teachers really scrambled and rallied to make sure that their students don't stay at home without learning. So I know the kind of work that the teachers put in. So if, this, if the government sees this, uh, I would only appeal to the, 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 the state government. It's, it's, it might be a challenge, but we need to put our priorities right. If we don't educate our children, then we don't have uh, any economic growth. We don't have, uh, you know, the, 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 the cultural wherewithal. We don't have the emotional intelligence. Everything that the child is, you know, you know stems out of what the teachers put into them. Yeah. So for you, are we on the path to elevating this profession as a noble profession, make it attractive so that other people can indeed take over? We can't help but do that. If we continue to relegate the teaching profession, then we would be relegating a lot in our lives. Um, it used to be that you know, when you were the child of a teacher or when you were a teacher, you were held in high esteem. I mean, Finland, they have done it. We have seen the results. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel. We just have to copy. And so the teachers, if, 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 we, if we elevate them and you know, we, we, we pay them what they, now, uh, I have to uh, temper that with the fact that we need to make sure that the people who are teaching for us are the qualified ones. Uh, bachelor's degree, master's degree, pay them well and, you know, let them really dedicate their lives, you know, to these children. Then we will see the results. It's, it's, it's a no-brainer. How far or close are we to at least um, meeting some of the ideals that you just highlighted? Uh, actually, it's, we're not far. If the state governments or, you know, the, the people who are in charge of each one of these educational uh, arms of, 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 of uh, the, the ministry would, you know, put their hearts to it, even uh, private sector organizations that I know are actually making these ideals uh, happen for Nigerians right now, all the government needs to do is you know, what are you doing and how is this working? And, you know, let's push it forward and let's embrace it and make it happen. So um, we're, we're, uh, we have the people who can make it happen. All right, then, Professor Abiola, I wish you good faculty. Thank you for joining us today on Africa 54. Thank you for having me. Welcome back to Africa 54. I'm Vincent McCory in Washington. In Sub-Saharan Africa, the United Nations estimates that at least 50% of children do not have access to internet. A nonprofit broadcaster is rapidly expanding to fill an educational gap left by coronavirus lockdown schools. Nazanin Mushiri reports. From a sofa in Kenya's capital, Nairobi, five-year-old Miguel is learning how to say fish. For his family, like millions of others across the world, television, as well as radio and the internet, have been plugging an educational gap left by lockdown schools. And for companies like non-profit Ubungo, it's prompted a rapid expansion. 
Miguel's mother, Celestine Wanjiru, says while other cartoons are for fun, Obungo's programs are helping her child. For example, many children don't like mathematics at all, but through the, through Bongo, they can learn and take it as it's very enjoyable doing mathematics. Eh? Obungo was set up by a group of artists, innovators and educators in Tanzania in 2014 and offers content for free to broadcasters. Head of communications Iman Lipumba says at the start of the year, they were reaching 11 million homes in 12 countries. Now we are reaching, I think it's over 17 million households in 20 plus countries across Africa. She says most conversations around educational technology are focused on online solutions. Having lamb curry. Oh, but wait, what about you, Nuru? But the majority of children and families in Africa still do not have access to the internet or devices such as computers. The United Nations estimates at least half of children in sub-Saharan Africa don't have access to the internet. For Miguel's family, Obungo's shows are the only option for now. But they say TV can't replace the classroom, and they hope that schools will reopen again soon. Women's rights activists in South Sudan have called on their leaders to recognize the crucial role women play in preventing conflict and forging peace and reconciliation in war-torn countries. Rebecca Buchai is a displaced women's rights leader in South Sudan's second largest city of Malakal and is currently residing in a UN Protection of Civilians site. With the upcoming transition of the site into a conventional camp for internally displaced people, she says she believes now is the time for the South Sudanese people and authorities to shape durable peace together and make sure peace is an inclusive, participatory process for women as well as men. <laughs> We are seeking peace. We are calling for peace. We want peace in our hearts and a true peace. The government must care for all of us and listen to the calls of women for once. Our children have been orphaned. Therefore, we are demanding peace, but there is no peace, no stability, no security. The country is unstable. The country has totally collapsed. South Sudan became Africa's newest state in 2011 following an independence referendum when voters from Sudan's oil-producing South chose to split from its northern neighbor Sudan. Civil war broke out and South Sudan is still reeling from its impact. The five-year conflict claimed about 400,000 lives, triggered a farming and displaced millions of people. <laughs> For a good future, there must be development, because our country has natural abundant resources. It is a vast land that has worked for the men. Men don't think about fighting. They think of development for the future generations. According to the United Nations, when women are included in a peace process, the agreement is 35% more likely to last at least 15 years. It's time for a short break. As we do, we'd like to remind you to visit our website, this channelstv.com, for news and programming around the clock. You can also find us at youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. Still to come. Against the odds and despite threats from Islamist militants, women's basketball thrives in Somalia and shoots for international competition. Welcome back to Africa 54. I'm Vincent McCory in Washington. Social media companies are taking down videos and images that could be vital in prosecuting serious crimes, according to a new report from Human Rights Watch. Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter are increasingly using artificial intelligence algorithms to remove material deemed offensive or illegal. Human Rights Watch says vital evidence is being missed or destroyed. Henry Ridgewell explains. The Russian missile launcher that prosecutors say was used to fire the weapon that brought down Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 in 2014. 
The videos were collated from social media sites by the organisation Bellingcat, whose evidence was used by the multinational joint investigation team leading the criminal investigation. Russia denies involvement. What we know from Bellingcat is at some point uh, late at, in the later stages of the investigation, they went back to uh, look at the sources, some of the social media posts that they'd used to substantiate their investigations uh, in order to provide that to uh, judicial authorities in the Netherlands. And at that point, the, the content had come down. Evidence from social media plays a central role in many investigations, like these videos uncovered by Amnesty International, purportedly showing abuses carried out by the Nigerian army during its offensive against the terror group Boko Haram. In its new report, titled Video Unavailable, Human Rights Watch warns vital evidence is being deleted. What we started to notice in the last few years, uh, particularly since 2017, is that we would see a video of, let's say, soldiers executing someone or, you know, an ISIS propaganda video. And, um, you know, if 15 minutes later, an hour later, we went back to look at the video again, it was suddenly gone. Social media companies told Human Rights Watch they are required by law to remove material that could be offensive or incite terror, violence or hatred. As well as human moderators, many also use artificial intelligence algorithms to take down material. Nowadays, these algorithms are, are, are so effective that they are taking down content um, the minute it gets posted. So no user ever actually gets to see that content before it comes down. That includes law enforcement agencies pursuing criminal convictions. The International Criminal Court issued its first arrest warrant in 2017 based largely on evidence collected from social media for the Libyan commander Mahmoud al werfali accused of murdering several captives. Civil society groups like Syria Archive are using social media videos to document potential war crimes, including the use of chemical weapons. What we're calling for is the creation of some kind of global mechanism, sort of a, an archive or library. Human Rights Watch says it is in dialogue with social media companies about creating such an archive. Twitter said it is unable to provide civil society organizations access to users' content without an appropriate legal warrant. Facebook and YouTube had not responded to Human Rights Watch or VOA requests for comment by the time of publication. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, London. Against the odds, and despite threats from Islamist militants, women's basketball thrives in Somalia and shoots for international competition. In some parts of the world, this would be a normal sight, a group of women playing basketball. However, these Somali women are braving the scorn of their families and the threat of attack by gunmen who think women should not play sport publicly. No one supports us or gives us equipment, and we do not have anyone supporting the players with uniforms, balls and shoes. We even do not have a proper court. We met the district commissioner of Hama Jarab and requested him to give us time to play on the district's playing field. He gave us a slot to train girls in the field, and we are staying here, and we really want to thank the district commissioner for that. Undeterred, they are led by their female coaches who inspect the team as they dribble basketballs. I decided to train girls after I saw that the girls enjoyed and needed someone to train them and help them. This is also a voluntary organization, so I came to train them. For security reasons, the women only play in compounds behind high concrete walls which shields them from the gaze of the curious or those who might attack them. Mogadishu is risky and we cannot openly say we're going to play. We put our playing clothes and shoes in our school bags and carry them like that to the field and then we pretend we're going to school or university. 
Despite the insecurity and with no government that encourages or supports us, we still love playing basketball. The team receives no funding. When they play matches, the trainers pool money to buy a cheap cop as a prize. But they love what they do and dream of starting teams all over Somalia. As the Jerusalem Dance Challenge sweeps across Africa, in Zimbabwe, the wildlife are joining in. Staff at a Zimbabwe Sanctuary for Rescued Wildlife have seen their dance video posted online with elephants, giraffes and other animals go viral. Kolobas Mavunga reports from Harare. Zimbabwe Wildlife Rescue Center, Wild is Life, this month joined in the Jerusalem Dance Challenge, a South African internet craze that is producer Master KG and vocalist Nungwebo went viral during the COVID-19 lockdown. Dancers, both professional and amateur, began posting their performances to the song online, including with some wildlife. For us particularly, just spreading awareness of animals and the sentience of animals and the importance of animals for our national heritage, basically, for our children and uh, for our country. Dankwit says she was shocked and excited when their dance video went viral, gaining thousands of views. She hopes it will help support Zimbabwe's wildlife tourism. South African tourist Philippa Mick says she decided to visit the World is Life Center after seeing the video online. With all the animals and the baby elephants, they were so cute. And seeing the giraffe in the video and all the spirit was just absolutely fantastic. And I thought it was one of the best Jerusalem videos that is out there. And it really encouraged me, because I'm from South Africa, to come here and actually see it for myself. Like much of Africa, Zimbabwe's tourism industry has been suffering from the pandemic since March. But even before COVID-19, Zimbabwe struggled to attract tourists. For us to be successful, we need a sound domestic tourism uh, product. Then we can go to the region and uh, effectively send it out to the international market and increase our arrivals, thereby increasing our contribution to the GDP, which is currently at 8%. Zimbabwe hopes its rich wildlife can grow tourism and the troubled economy. Groups like Wild is Life certainly help, and more viral videos of cute wildlife would not hurt either. Columbus Mavunga for viewing news Arare. Well, and that's our show for today. You can find all the continent's top news and world news online at voaafrica.com. Check it out. I'm Vincent McCory in Washington. Channel's television has our last word from Lagos. We look forward to bringing you another show next week. ChannelsTV.com is your source for news and other programming. I'm Chain Balinoso. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.